Let's swing in the new year two months late by creating a Hercules beetle, one of the largest beetles in the world. As such, our tinfoil base is bigger than usual, too big even, and as you'll see later, I'm even covering it with clay. Who would have guessed? Snipping off the excess, I'm turning this zero into a hero. For going the whole smoothie down to clay with my dirty, nasty, bitch-made tools, I'm just using my angel fingers and straight up manhandling it into shape. If you're not smarter than a 5th grader and couldn't put together yourself, the Hercules beetle was given that nickname after its homie saw it lift something 850 times its size, like a 150 pound boulder, or your ex-girlfriend, or a fallen log, which is the same as me lifting 70 rexes, or the tongue of a blue whale, or the weight of my potential failure. The last rhino beetle you saw me make over a year ago, aka the Atlas beetle, he was sturdy. He could hold his own for sure, except for the fact that he was low-key not passing the test of time very well, so I'm making this Hercules beetle to live up to his namesake with some internal wiring, you know, so he can go the distance. But for the Hercules beetles are just a type of rhinoceros beetle, which is why they have a big ass horn that's quite literally larger than its entire body. One of the main reasons for that is bug hubris, so that he can fight other males for self-defense purposes, or, or to show a display of worthiness for the female Hercules beetle, in which case the winning male is granted the reward of freaky circus bug sex after what is essentially a dick swinging competition. And I mean, and I mean, I mean. I don't know how many of y'all are fucking freaks, but maybe, ladies, I mean, like once Congress is finished with gun control or abortion rights, we can just, we could present the real big brain ideas, like making men fight for the death for the chance of some pussy. I don't know. I'm just spitballing here. I'm just, don't take me, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, food for thought even, but back to the matter at hand, literally in my hand. So I'm just making the finishing touches on the bottom horn, which I'm assuming is so that the Hercules beetle can home some WWE combos, like grabbing his opponent and just flipping him, just fucking chucking across the forest floor. Now I'm making the face, starting with his actually ironically innocent and sweet looking eyes. I must say, these beetles are really only jacked up when it comes to other male Hercules beetles or opponents really, but they're pretty calm otherwise. They aren't aggressive towards humans basically at all, so they're supposedly great pets to have, so you could look into that if the idea really tickles your fancy. I'm making a great effort here to separate the face from the head because the top horn is almost like a helmet. Not really in a I can take it off sense, but more like this is something that's encasing my whole head, but not my face. So imagine how our lower jaw can move around on its own when we eat or talk or anything, and it's not our entire head moving. It's just the bottom lower jaw. That's how it is for the Hercules beetle, but their bottom jaw is his entire face. Hope that helps. Feel free to ponder that as I create the mini horns on the big horns. So, one of the reasons I've retired the Atlas Beetle to the old folks home is that not one, but both of his feelers have just completely popped off. I'm not a fan of taking the same L twice, so I'm making the feelers on the Hercules Beetle wire base instead of just clay base, and I'm really a fan of how they came out. This bug is coming out very symmetrical so far, so I tried to keep that up when creating the body. As you can see, I made sketch lines before going in deep in my tool, and I also made sketch lines to lead a path for the wing casing ridge to go, which leads around the side of the body, and as you could probably guess, is what hides the beetle's wings. As big-backed as they are, they can indeed fly, but if I remember correctly, they don't fly all that often because they're not all that good at it. But they're nocturnal, apparently. So at least they don't have many witnesses and can just fly absurdly in the dark privacy, as one does. After that, 
I just attach the head without fucking up either part too badly and bake it. I wheeled over the old timer to show you why I was more thoughtful and how I use my wiring for the horns, how one of the feelers popped off with the other one popping off later, and just a size comparison. But onto the legs, I map out the holes of where they're going to be like usual, but this time I decided to forego my usual M shape and just stick them on so that I could maneuver the shape of the legs while they're on the body. I can't remember the exact reasoning for this, but there's a good 70-30 chance there actually was a good reason, so I'll have faith in the me of the past when it comes to that. I don't know if you noticed, but I think the legs of my Atlas Beetle are a little disproportionate. It was my very first bug ever and I have no regrets that keep me up at night about it, but I did want to make the legs of my Hercules Beetle look just like a little tougher and like it could actually withstand the weight of his reputation. I also wanted the spikes to look more uniform on this bad boy, which is good because after over a year, I think it's safe to say I've mastered the art of making the leg spike, so it's not that big a deal. Still takes a couple tries sometimes though. So. As you can see by my editor so graciously including this fucking blooper reel. What? What? Not me introducing a new character in the play. I've decided that for the new year I will start using sandpaper more often than not because bugs are so beautiful and a big contributing factor is just how smooth they are, which is something I've been unintentionally leaving out. So I use the recommended method of starting with the roughest grit I have and moving down from there until we have a bug as smooth as a woman after an everything shower. Now though, because I work on details in a random order, we're back to the leg spikes. Okay, when it, when it comes to the Hercules beetle, they're actually more of a dark mustard color, but I saw one random photo on Pinterest of a Hercules beetle that was more of a spotty light green. So I went with that instead because I thought it had a lot of swag and to give my growing collection of bugs a more colorful variety. I know what you're thinking and no, it is not lost on me that I decided to upload this bug during love month, even though V-Day is technically passed. Now you could say, Sydney, why didn't you choose a red or a pink bug or a bug that mates for life or something equally as corny? And I damn well might do that next year. I was inspired to do the Hercules Beetle because I recently reread a fan fiction of one of my all time favorite anime, Haikyuu. And for all the alpha females out there who know which fic I'm talking about, I hope all of your crops are plentiful this year and that you get lots of play. For all the plebs who don't, I may or may not link in the description for you. But some of the best romance stories I've read have been fics. One of which is the courtship ritual of the Hercules beetle. And as such, I will always find this bug unorthodoxically romantic. So there you go. Now I'm dry brushing with the same base black color to add the texture of the Hercules shell. I was just testing it out on the head before I moved on to the body because I was genuinely excited to test it out. So I'm going to continue the same process for the body that I did for the head, which is painting the green base, defining the edges, and other defined details like the middle seam. And... Like the middle seam. And... And finally, dry brushing, but the brush wasn't as dry as I wanted, so that portion got all fucked up. So I covered it with more base paint and moved on, but I'm impatient as shit, so I ended up fucking it up twice, like a bozo, since the paint wasn't dry. But it's okay, I just covered it again, third time's the charm. So while I actually let the paint dry, I moved on to the eye, which isn't really gold in real life. Boo, okay. tomato, all right. tomato, all right. You all right. Right. You right. 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 But, but I wanted to break up the monotony of the black. And if you look it up, some Hercules beetle eyes look almost brownish, so bite me. I also did my highlighting stage with some lighter than black, darker than brown brown, just to give the paint job some depth. But the color ended up being a little too dark. So I'm really so it's really only visible in hard lighting, but it's a thought that counts, so I'm sticking by it. A thought that 
doesn't count, however, that I am not sticking by is this idea of mine to give an homage to the real Hercules and paint the underside of the horn gold because I thought that clashed too much with the color scheme I was already going for, so I ditched it off camera. The very last finishing touches of this beetle is adding the telltale spots on the shell. I think this might be one of my favorite paint drops so far, only because I really enjoy how the rough dry brushing pairs so nicely with the spots, which pairs so nicely with the bright green. So I don't know, to me it gives my Hercules beetle a life of the party kind of vibe. And now we've reached the final portion, which is the glaze, which also means we're done. So thank you so much for watching. I'm determined to be more consistent this year. So thank you to all of my subscribers and those that are yet to come. Leave a name for this bad boy in the comments. Check out my store in the description if you want me to make a bug just for you. And thank you again for watching. See you for the next one. Bye.